Bioware storytelling is all about making you feel emotions in situations where you thought you might not. Doing an MMO was scary. Massively multiplayer games are the biggest and most complex games in the world to build. Anytime you release a game with as much content as this has, you're always going to be a little surprised at how fast people burn through it. Dozens of worlds, millions of words of spoken dialogue. It was daunting, to say the least, but it was also extremely exciting to set out to build this entire Star Wars universe. We're just set up in this position to take advantage of something that's kind of this once in a generation opportunity. Video games had been a hobby of mine ever since I was a kid. I started working in map editors and mods when I was very young. And one day my dad said to me, you know, this is what you're doing when you're not working. Have you ever thought about doing this for work? That really made me rethink a lot of things and I just sort of jumped in head first and haven't looked back. I did animation for television for 10 years before joining the games industry. And I learned a lot of my filmmaking and storytelling aspects in that time. But then I was always somebody who played games, you know, on the side and eventually started to get into game development of my own. Growing up, I was into all sorts of different things. I loved fantasy, I loved science fiction, I loved detective stories. I tried to just absorb everything I could. And that was really what kind of drove me, I think, in the direction of becoming a writer and now as a creative lead. I've been playing the pen and paper games since I was a kid, Dungeons and Dragons. That game really showed what you could do with the imagination and allowing yourself to live and tell stories in, in other worlds. Star Wars. My first exposure to Star Wars was when I was a little kid. I remember being at my childhood friend's house. I remember sitting on his couch and watching Return of the Jedi. My dad took me to the midnight screening of Star Wars on the opening day and went back to see it another 38 times after that. I got to see Empire. My first movie you know, I ever saw. It's also my favorite movie of all time. It probably always will be. Oh man, I don't even know. <laughs> I feel like I was shown it in the womb or something. Like I just grew up on Star Wars. It was the epic story of a hero that started from nothing and became somebody who was going to help this galaxy. It's kind of a dream of a lot of folks to be able to have such a large impact on your world. Dark Horse Comics was making a Star Wars series of comic books, and they wanted to take that, that throwaway line from Obi-Wan Kenobi. The Jedi have been defending the Old Republic for a thousand generations. They wanted to take that and set a comic book series uh, thousands of years in the past. So that's how the Old Republic era originally came into existence. And then we took that, but we wanted to go our, our own direction. I don't remember how I first became aware of Knights of the Old Republic as a player. It just, as soon as it came out, I immediately had to have it. That's all I remember. And uh, I still didn't know quite what to expect going into it. We were coming from Dungeons and Dragons role-playing games. Now we're doing Star Wars role-playing game. And we felt Star Wars is all about, it's, it's a movie. So it needed to feel more like a movie. So we needed to have voice acting, we needed to have cinematic scenes. All we wanted to do was bring all of our passion for Star Wars and put it into a video game. Knights of the Old Republic really tells a traditional kind of Star Wars story. You're a lone hero who kind of gets swept up in galactic events. You meet interesting characters who become your allies and your friends. And you're adventuring together and there's this evil Sith Lord that you're up against and you've got to take him down and save the galaxy. And then all of a sudden there's this brick wall. We wanted to do a big twist. Empire Strikes Back, one of the biggest moments is the twist. And we wanted to have a similar moment in Knights of the Old Republic where the players' expectations are all turned on their head. So we had a big brainstorming session on what the twist could be. You know, it had to be a simple twist. It had to be a twist that was personal. It had to be a twist that would change, you know, the galaxy and everything else. And it turns out that you were the actual villain behind all of these events. You're the reason all of this is happening. And it's just mind blowing. It just completely changes every aspect of the story. And so many things that characters had said earlier in the story where they reference things the Jedi had done or things that the Sith had done in the past, it recontextualizes all of it. You cannot hide from what you once were, Revan. Recognize that you were once the Dark Lord and know that I have taken your place. I never saw it coming for sure. I mean, maybe other people did, or maybe they're just lying and said, they said they did, but I definitely didn't see it coming. Before Knights of the Republic shipped, we didn't know how much it was going to resonate. And once we saw it was getting exceptional reviews, it was kind of like, whew, 
<laughs> that was, it's, it's good, we did good, we did good. It was so cinematic, so different, and just so evocative of Star Wars that it just grabbed me immediately. Like, I think I played it through in maybe two days, just nonstop, barely sleeping. That was a great example of the power of a great story. People 10, 15 years later still remember that game because it's something that hadn't ever, at least in the games that I had played, had never really been done, at least not done that well. Sith Empire has returned. We were looking for the next big game. Everyone wanted us to do a Star Wars, Old Republic MMO, so we were always negotiating with LucasArts to get that. Then we got Star Wars. KOTOR 1 and 2 were hugely influential on how we designed Star Wars The Old Republic, especially the storyline. Both for us as the creative people, and we knew for the fans coming into it, they would hear Bioware, Star Wars, MMO, and immediately say, oh, it's like KOTOR, but it's an MMO. Oh my, that sounds amazing. So that was very much what we wanted to deliver to them, that KOTOR experience of a very personal uh, Star Wars epic story, but in a shared universe that all of their friends are around for as well. The Old Republic is set a few hundred years after the previous games because we really wanted it to be a fresh place for you to come in even if you hadn't played KOTOR 1 or 2. You're kind of coming in as a new character, kind of experiencing the galaxy in your own new way. But the situation of the whole galaxy is set up from those previous games, this idea of this secret Sith Empire that's lurking in the shadows and has finally kind of come to the fore and invaded the universe. The philosophy we brought into Star Wars The Old Republic on the cinematic side was to make sure that the player always felt like the hero. The shots would always reflect the player from a very heroic standpoint. Whenever we could kind of embellish that with music or with visual effects, we would do so. And a lot of, you know, RPGs, a lot of MMOs, other kinds of games, you start at a very low power level. You're kicking rats with, and punching them with your bare hands, and that's all you've got going, right? And that's not really Star Wars. That's not exciting. So it was a very careful balancing act to have players start with some core abilities that were simple, quick to understand, but still felt you know, cool and powerful and, and appropriate to their class. So you know, if I'm a Sith, I'm still going to be able to use a lightsaber, and if I'm a smuggler, I can draw my blaster and do a cool blaster shot right out the gate. And then as the game goes on, as my character develops, the abilities and the depth of those abilities changes and goes along with it. A very common thing in other online games is, you know, you fight one creature at a time, and if you pick up more than one creature, your life gets too low and it doesn't feel satisfying. For us, the big difference we wanted to make is make all the combat feel heroic. If you're a Jedi Knight, you leap into a group of three enemies and you can take them all down at once, and that was a big part of the philosophy. The last thing we want is someone to come into our game trying to live out their fantasy or play this great story and then find the combat just sort of pulls them out of the story and it's too difficult for them to understand or anything like that. At the same time, we don't want to make it so simplistic that people that like that find it lacking. We have dozens of worlds, millions of words of spoken dialogue, eight class stories. It's a huge game. And when you're making a game of that size, you have to have a great process, you have to have great communication, you have to have a, you know, a large team. That was, that was probably our biggest challenge. It was daunting, to say the least, but it was also extremely exciting to set out to build this entire Star Wars universe that players can immerse themselves in and tell their own stories with. Giving those hero stories to the players was to me a great accomplishment. We had a very large team and they all took the story and Star Wars as a whole to heart and it was great being part of that and seeing that come to fruition. You assumed no force could challenge you. When I started on Star Wars Order Public about six months before launch, the biggest thing at that point was getting the service ready. We'd have as many people in the game as possible. Would the service hold up? Would the servers survive? And actually, it turns out, I think we had the smoothest MMO launch probably in the history of, of gaming because we put a lot of energy into that part of the process. The thing that I love about MMOs is the community, the camaraderie the togetherness and the culture that springs out from the player base. 
I think it really is just that idea of getting so many people together at once to kind of share this world and go on adventures together or, you know, even adventure by yourself but have your friends around to talk to about it, to see your achievements or to, you know, just share in that, that experience. It's probably still the largest game content-wise that's, that's ever been built in, in the history of, of video games. I met so many people building that game and uh, really good people. It was one of the defining experiences for my life. When we did the Shadow of Revenue expansion, it was all about trying to continue this story. And we mentioned how with the launch of the original game, we had these eight class stories. We worked out quite quickly that it was really hard to produce as much content as players wanted if we continued all of those class stories. So kind of over time, we've condensed those stories and joined them together into a single part. Shadow of Revan was really, to us, our first step to get back to the kinds of Bioware cinematic storytelling that we feel sets us apart and that our fans love the most. The time has come. Only we can stand against Revan. Bring as many fools as you like. You won't stop what must be done. Revan, who was the main player character in Knights of the Old Republic, is returning to the story in Shadow of Revan. It's about this sort of deep kind of conspiracy surrounding him and this plot that he's developed to, he believes, change the galaxy for the better. But obviously that comes into conflict with the player's own interests. Revan is such a popular person for obvious reasons through all the KOTOR series, and we really wanted to bring him back in a meaningful way and give him a really powerful send-off in the Old Republic universe. Your freedom will be the wars you wage. We really wanted Fallen Empire to be a fresh start, a chance to tell a new story that is both a continuation of what had happened before, but was sort of an intriguing and straightforward place for a new player or a long time lapsed player to jump straight in and get immediately invested. You've started by watching this sacrifice trailer, which is kind of the prelude to the expansion. And you've seen these two brothers have this ongoing struggle with their father, ending with one of the boys being killed by the other. You know, an Arkan becomes kind of the child left over. And then in that first chapter, you find yourself walking through this throne room across the scene where you know Thexen has been killed in the years gone by. And you had this confrontation with Arkan and Valkorion, his father. There's a, a huge twist, and then you find yourself actually defeated and betrayed, and you're taken off and you're put into Carbonite for five years. That amount of energy and that amount of excitement in such a small scene at the end of the first chapter, I think that just sets the tone for what this game's gonna be all about in the future. I have always loved the stars. I like the Emperor a lot. He has a cool face, his outfit's cool, the voice is pretty nice. I just like the way it all comes together. Valkarian's a complex character. He has been known as the Sith Emperor, but in Fallen Empire he claims, oh, I'm not really a Sith Lord, I'm beyond that, I'm something more. It's always difficult to know whether he's really being fully honest with you or not, and I always love that kind of character, someone that you're always having to question to see where our players will say, oh, he's probably evil, but he's also probably right. Uh, I guess I'll do what he says, I don't know. It's, it's always just a lot of fun to, to play with those kind of notions. I don't leave so cool for just anyone. Be honored. I wanted to make a Star Wars villain that was different. Part of the inspiration was a talk done by the director of Clone Wars. He was talking about, you know, all the Star Wars villains are always dressed in black in a certain way, and wouldn't it be cool if you had a villain that wasn't that way? And so the creative son, Knights of Fallen Empire, came up with a character that, you know, was dressed all in white and uh, I mean, who looked like, you know, a prince and, and had a very different look and feel to him than, than the other villains. But at the same time, he feels like he's an iconic Star Wars villain. Because it's so character driven, we thought that the fidelity of these characters needed to be enhanced. We produced characters with a higher set of textures, with a little bit more polygons and the actual mesh itself. On the combat side, we definitely added a bunch of new abilities to improve movement. That was all around trying to make combat feel more fast-paced and more engaging. The Star Wars fantasy is more action-packed. You know, you have blaster bolts flying around, you have acrobatic lightsaber combat. That's something that uh, Star Wars fans expect. With Knights of Fallen Empire, we leaned into that more, and we're gonna continue to lean into that in the future.
If I were to give advice to somebody looking to get into the games industry, I would say just get started on anything that really drives your passion. Play games, but play them with a critical eye. Don't just look at them in terms of what's fun and what's not, but why they're fun and why they're not. As an aspiring or upcoming writer, the best thing you can do is write and accept that it might not be the most flawless piece of writing that has ever been made because it's the first thing you're doing or the second thing you're doing or the hundredth thing you're doing. Always push yourself further, do crazy things, put yourself out there. Really enjoy the things that are entertaining around you. Video games, movies, cartoons, music, anything you can for as long as you can. There's really no reason it can't happen. You just have to be persistent about it and probably go get a computer science degree. <laughs> One of the core values of Bioware is humility. We didn't want to you know, rest on our laurels. We always wanted to do something new and better. I think it's allowed Bioware to last for, for 20 years when a lot of other studios haven't lasted that long. I feel like with Old Republic, we're really on a great path right now. We've got some of the coolest story content we've ever done and some of the most amazing cinematics that we've ever been able to create. So I'm really excited to just keep moving in that direction. The legacy of Bioware storytelling is at the forefront of what we try to do every day. It's a lot to live up to, but more now than ever, I think SWOTOR is really living up to the Bioware storytelling and, and trying to push it forward. We're now riding this huge, amazing wave. We really changed our strategy for the game with Knights of the Fallen Empire over this past year. And now that we've released that, it's been our most successful expansion to date. Tied into that, we have this new generation of Star Wars happening. We have 10 years of movies ahead of us to really enjoy, and the hype around Star Wars has never been better. The great thing about Star Wars is everyone loves it so much. So many people out there want to be able to contribute to the lore of Star Wars, and you have a very talented group of people that are very passionate about what they're working on, and we give them the freedom to make their ultimate Star Wars story. I am extremely fortunate to have the job that I do. Every character in Star Wars has a story. Everyone's important, and yet everyone is just a part of this greater galaxy. Now I get to contribute to those stories and that galaxy, and I, I couldn't be happier. Lucky is a mild word to describe how I feel to be a, you know, a part of Star Wars. It's such a huge part of our culture. It's the biggest IP on the planet. And you know, I grew up, it was my favorite thing ever. Having the chance to contribute to that, to be a part of it, is just incredibly awesome. I just don't even know how else to say it. It's just very, very cool.